Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Cisco Systems, with support from NetApp. And now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco. We're on the ground, we're on the, in, in the booth of Cisco Systems. This is theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE Media. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder, with Jeff Frick, the general manager of our CUBE Silicon Valley operations. Welcome you back to our live wall-to-wall, -wall, three days of coverage, two CUBE operations here in the Cisco booth, one in the CUBE Logic booth where Dave Vellante is, and our next guest is JT Von Star Digan. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having I me. I couldn't roll the R, just for, I got the whole New yes, Jersey R yes, thing going on. Absolutely. I couldn't do yes. it, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, did my I best. don't know if, if it's New Jersey. It's, it's a New York, yeah, it's yeah, a hard yeah, yeah. R. Um, <laughs> so you're the Senior Director of Engineering, System Engineering, Global Data Centers, Cisco. Right. Um, I mean, data center is kind of new, new, new world for Cisco to play in the data center. And you guys got a lock on the data center. I mean, going back to um, you know, the internet, Right. Cisco, huge incumbent, huge presence, massive right. customer base. Oracle, same, 30 year history yes. uh, in databases. Larry Elson laid that out yesterday. So really, you guys are you know, birds of a feather in the industry leaders. Um, the modernization's happening. What's your relationship like with Oracle? Obviously, you guys are strong at UCS, working well. Explain to us the uh, Cisco-Oracle yeah. relationship. Oh, absolutely, so uh, as you indicated earlier, right, so uh, Cisco and Oracle have a relationship that goes back like 20 years, right? Initially, uh, as a joint customer. Uh, they bought our networking switches and uh, we bought their uh, Oracle applications and databases. And, uh, you know, of course, Cisco is one of uh, Oracle's largest customers, right? We are running Oracle Rack, we are running uh, Oracle EBS, and, um, you know, we, uh, you know, Oracle is also run running uh, Cisco switches, of course. And uh, so we have been joint customers for a very long time. And uh, we've also done a lot of great uh, engineering collaboration between the two companies. Uh, we test each other products. Initially we did that, you know, they tested our switches. We tested their applications on top of our switches. And then uh, as we introduced UCS, the whole game basically changed, right? So... How did it change? Uh, well, you know, Getting into the server business is a totally different ball game, <laughs> right? You got to make sure that the applications work really well on your servers, right? And uh, what we have done with Oracle is uh, really, uh, you know, innovative. Uh, and it's the, the proof of that you can find in the fact that we have 37 world record performance benchmarks of Oracle applications on top of UCS. Why is that? First of all is UCS uh, is a high performing server, right? Uh, but secondly, we also work very closely with Oracle from an engineering perspective. We do joint benchmark testing and because of the high performance of UCS, we have been able to push the Oracle applications and the databases to their, you know, to maximum capacity. They have been, you know, they have to work at a scale for which they were not being tested initially. But with UCS, they were, we were able to push that limit. And uh, as such, we were able to identify challenges, bugs within the applications that otherwise they would not have found. So why, why were you pushing it to bounds where it hadn't been pushed before? Because of our, uh, you know, higher, uh, per, uh, you know, performance, uh, whether it's from a uh, processing perspective or from a networking perspective, we were really pushing the boundaries of the applications. We were able to scale it beyond a scale that they were normally testing their applications, right? And that was important also from an Oracle perspective, but also important, you know, if you look at it from an integrated infrastructure perspective, you know, it's not just an Oracle application running on a Cisco server, but usually the storage involved, 
So you got to look at the entire integrated infrastructure, right? So you test the application, you test the server, and you test the storage. And what we were able to do was basically prove that integrated infrastructures based on Oracle applications, Cisco servers, and third-party storage appliances worked really well. Interesting. So talk about how that then evolves in terms of opportunities to use the, the apps and the infrastructure in ways and use cases that were formerly uh, not available. Or did you just do that better? Or was there some, some new yeah. uh, opportunities well, opened up? You know, basically what we were able to demonstrate is that uh, you know, uh, customers can trust you know, Oracle applications and databases to work really well on UCS. And uh, not only uh, by having these great performance results, but also we, as I said before, uh, Cisco is one of Oracle's largest customers, and we basically migrated our entire uh, infrastructure from you know, running Oracle applications on RISC to entirely running on x86 on UCS, right? That's probably one of our biggest use cases because we can use that very effectively with our customers. We can point our customers to what we did at Cisco, and they can feel confident that uh, you know this really works well. Very interesting point. I was just tweeting away there, and I was yeah. somebody tweeting away about you get a joint customer since Cisco was founded. Really, obviously, speaks to the relationship. Right. So, tongue in cheek, I said, "Oh, is that Oracle easy to work with?" Of course, it's easy to work with, as you said. Um, but one of the trends that Larry pointed out that you guys have been talking about is the modernization of the data center. Certainly, mm -hmm. cloud is there. Right. But the efficiency of the data center as an operating system, one monolithic entity seems to be the trend to the software-defined data center. Right. Could you tease out a little bit on how you guys see that playing out? Obviously, having high-performance servers is one step in the direction. Right. Um, vertically integrated, differentiated yeah. product, yeah. commodity gear. Right. How does this all tie together? Obviously, big data and software play yeah. itself. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So, uh, you know, I got to bring you back to what we really uh, introduced with UCS. We innovated the server technology with things like service profiles, where basically we abstracted the hardware from the application, and uh, a lot of the information that was required to make a server work, like uh, the firmware, the, the BIOS revisions, the boot sequences and stuff like that, what we were able to do was to basically store that in software in what we call a service profile. So we had abstraction at the server level, right? which made it really easy for customers to deploy servers in a UCS environment, to create a new server to support an Oracle workload, and do it really quickly and really consistently. Right? How about in a virtualized environment? No. And same thing in a virtualized environment. There's no, you know, no difference there. But what I'm going to get to is that you know, we did it for the server, now we're doing it for the entire network not just the data center, but all the way from the data center over the wide area network to the end user device through the application-centric infrastructure solution, right? Think of it as, you know, abstracting the network and make it really easy to deploy Oracle applications and databases on the network, right? And not only that, but also troubleshooting. You know, we were just having a really- Abstracting the data center now. Now right. we're abstracting yeah. the data center. It's not yeah. just the data center, it's actually the entire network right. from you're the data put it center. On there. Put on a chip in your Fitbit so you can actually get personalized <laughs> right. service directly right. to your, uh, right. into your arteries. Yeah. No, but we were just talking with Dan Hutchins, from CTO at CSC, right. and they're working on all these service uh, cataloging, all that stuff was great. And we're talking about the persona level networking capabilities. With service profiles, do you see that extending out to unique services that are going to be deployed, or is it at the individual basis, or is it targeted at workload only? Well, you know, API, you know, ACI actually enables a lot of different things, right? Because we have uh, northbound APIs that uh, software developers can basically develop new services on top of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing the, the opportunities that it enables. Uh, you know, uh, there's probably too many examples to list, as, uh, as many examples as you have uh, open source uh, software developers. Yeah. So what's the biggest disruption that you see that's fun that you look at saying, I'm so excited about that trend? in the data center. Technology trend, could be an enabler, could be a cultural shift. Uh -huh. what, what can you point to that's just kind of out there that you say, that, I love that trend? You know, the, the trend that I find really exciting is the, uh, you know, the cloud trend, right? Where uh, customers are basically going to access services that could be 
either in a data center on premises, or could be hosted in a public cloud, or you know could run one moment in the public cloud and then in the uh, on the in the in the private cloud, and enabling that, and basically you know enabling the uh, the IT organization to be become a service broker. That is, I believe, uh, a trend that is really going to happen uh, long term. And, and you know, it's it's a great opportunity. It's a great, also a great challenge challenge to make it happen for ourselves in the industry and for our customers. Okay, JT, we really appreciate you coming on. Kind of as a sub in for a cancellation, which is great. You're gonna be back on Wednesday going doing a drill down right. uh, on, on the virtualization stuff. I'm having a lot of fun. Thanks for coming by and uh, sharing uh, some quick commentary on the Oracle Cisco dynamic. Right. Very positive one. Uh, we are inside the Cisco booth on the ground, on the floor here at Oracle Open World Live in San Francisco for the Cube's three-day wall-to-wall coverage. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick here live on the ground. We'll be right back.